Hi everyone, it's Evo with Glitch Machines and today we're looking at Polygon 2.0. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the plugin's modulation system. For more videos going over the plugin's various sections and functions, please visit the Glitch Machines website and navigate to the Polygon webpage. Polygon 2.0 features a completely redesigned drag and drop node based modulation system that abandons the previous mod matrix panel in order to simplify the process of assigning and dialing in modulation settings. Encapsulated in a new tabbed design, this system gives the modulators more panel space and makes them more easily accessible. Each mod source incorporates a local color and number designation, called a source node, making it simple to maintain a visual overview of all the active mod assignments in a patch. You can drag and drop source nodes to any destination slots at parameters you wish to target. You can also right-click on an assignment to clear it. You can overwrite an active assignment by dropping another node onto it, and you can also assign a single modulation source to multiple destinations simultaneously. On top of Polygon's eight LFOs, we added four new modulation sequencers, which featured per-step user-definable curves, rate modulation, and a number of other powerful functions. To fully maximize Polygon's modulation facilities, we've also implemented a new mod utility panel, which allows you to transform, mix, randomize and contort modulation signals. A new mod sources panel has been implemented for convenient connection between parameters that are not visible on the interface simultaneously. This panel basically duplicates all of the plugin's local mod source nodes and places them in a single console for easy access while interconnecting the various elements of the plugin. Near the center of Polygon's interface, you'll find the newly implemented mod select section, which is used to switch between the three modulation source panels. Clicking this icon brings the Modulation Sequencer panel into view. The Sequencer panel features four tabbed step sequencers with up to 16 steps each. What makes these sequencers special is that each step can be set to a variety of shapes, making them extremely powerful modulation tools. For example, try putting the sequencer in one-shot mode, narrowing down the steps to a single step, and designating the step to the curve with the desired behavior. It's also possible to approximate multi-stage envelopes by activating more than one step and setting the shapes to your preference. Be sure to check out the factory presets where we've highlighted numerous creative applications of these sequencers. To access the desired sequencer, click the respective tab located above the lanes. The header of the currently visible sequencer will be illuminated and underlined in blue. You'll note that a transparent overlay is displayed over the active step on a per voice basis. You can right-click anywhere in the sequencer lanes to reveal a menu with options that allow you to manipulate the sequences to your liking. Copy allows you to copy a single step or an entire sequence. Paste allows you to paste a single step or an entire sequence. And Randomize allows you to randomize all of the shapes, all of the levels, or both. You can Alt or Option click a step to cycle through the following shapes. Standard step, which is equally weighted at the start and end of the step. Linear up, which is a linear curve increasing in value between the start and the end of the step. Linear down, which is a linear curve decreasing in value between the start and end of step. Exponential up, which is an exponential curve increasing in value between the start and end of the step. Exponential down, which is an exponential curve decreasing in value between the start and end of the step. Logarithmic up, which is a logarithmic curve increasing in value between the start and end of the step. Logarithmic down, which is a logarithmic curve decreasing in value between the start and end of a step. And random, which is like a standard step but generates a random value each time it's active. You can click and drag up and down on a step to increase or decrease its value from 0 to 100%. You can shift click on a step to align it with the previous step. Just keep in mind that dragging a step all the way down will set the value of that step to 0% but not skip the step entirely. At the right side of each sequencer lane, you'll find a number of pertinent parameters. 
The teal numbered node at the top right of each sequencer represents its source node, which you can click and drag to designate the respective sequencer as a modulation source for a desired target. The rate parameter sets the rate, or speed, of the sequencer. Activating the metronome icon synchronizes the sequencer with your DAW. When active, the rate knob displays beat divisions relevant to the host's clock. The steps parameter sets the number of steps for each sequencer between 1 and 16 steps. You can click on the playback mode icon to cycle through the various directional modes. Uh, please take a look at the sampler video where this is explained in further detail. Unlike the samplers, the sequencers include a random mode, which sends each step in a random direction. Up next, we have the LFO section. Clicking this icon brings the LFO panel into view. The low frequency oscillators have useful features that maximize their potential when it comes to complex modulation. We've updated their design and implemented orange source nodes at the top right of each LFO. This makes modulation assignments a simple matter of dragging and dropping source nodes to desired targets. As with all the modulation sources, each of the orange nodes are numbered according to their respective LFO, which then makes it easy to visually identify which source nodes are connected to which targets in any given patch. The rate parameter dictates the frequency, or speed, at which the LFO cycles. Activating the metronome icon synchronizes the LFO with your host. When synchronized, the rate knob displays beat divisions relevant to the host's clock. Activating the R icon restarts the LFO's cycle upon each trigger. Clicking through the wave icons selects the LFO waveform. The available options are sine, square, saw up, saw down, triangle, random, and smooth random. Next up, we have the modulation utility panel. Clicking this icon brings the modulation utility panel into view. The modulation utility panel features a number of extremely powerful tools that allow you to transform, mix, randomize, and contort modulation signals. All four of the random nodes generate a different set of random values which are held for the duration of the current trigger. You can assign these to individual parameters you'd like to randomize on each incoming trigger. The MIDI nodes allow you to modulate parameters via velocity or key tracking. This will set the assigned parameter to values based on incoming velocity or key tracking, where the minimum and maximum modulation values are represented by the lowest and highest velocity or MIDI note values. The converter and inverter modules feature two separate channels, each with a drop-down menu that allows you to designate the desired source. These modules offer the following options. Unipolar to bipolar converts unipolar modulation signals to bipolar. Bipolar to unipolar converts bipolar modulation signals to unipolar, bipolar invert inverts bipolar modulation signals, and unipolar invert inverts unipolar modulation signals. The modulator mix section features four modulation mixers that allow you to convolve and blend modulation sources in order to create even more complex shapes than what's possible with the modulation sources alone. As with the other sources, each mixer has a designated source node that is color-coded to denote its origin and numbered to denote the respective source. To create a modulation mix, select the two modulation sources you would like to mix via the drop-down menus at the left and right side of each mix knob. These menus include a list of all of the available options. Once you've chosen your desired options from the two menus, you can use the mix knob to blend and balance their signals accordingly. The resulting modulation signal can then be used as a modulation source in the same way as the other modulators. Finally, we have the Modulation Sources panel. Clicking this icon near the center of the interface brings this panel into view. This new Mod Sources panel has been implemented to facilitate the convenient connection between parameters that are not visible on the interface simultaneously. This panel essentially duplicates all of the plugin's source nodes and places them in a single console for easy access while interconnecting the various elements of the plugin. This concludes our look at Polygon 2.0's modulation system. Why is this?
Check out our website for more videos covering the various functions and sections of the plugin. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.